pressure on it, you can kind of get into it. And I'm going to work a little faster than I should, so I'm probably going to do a little damage to it to get through that. The tensor fascia lata really only connects in one little spot. So underneath there now I've, I can see the gluteus muscles. Those are all glutes. The gluteus maximus is on the front, on the top, just like it is in humans. But as we push back into this crotch area, I don't know if that's a scientific term or not, probably not. But we all know what we're talking about as we move back into the back. And I can push that open and underneath I can now see another muscle. In fact, I can see all three already. So there's the vastus, or I'm sorry, the gluteus maximus, gluteus the smallest one I just separate is the profundus. We, we call it what on humans? Gluteus minimus. minimus. And on the mink it's called the gluteus profundus and there is the gluteus medius inside there. So all you have to do is separate them so you can see them so that when your teacher gives you a test on the lab day and she sticks a probe in there like that, you guys can identify gluteus. what it is from the other two. Okay? Or are you going to do it that way where half of them they have to, yeah. you say the name and they're going, to, they're going to have to find it and poke it. So if you can't find it on your own mink, you're in trouble. All right, back into the medial aspect, the abductors. We've got, you guys cut that muscle which is called the sartorius, sartorius and you cut this muscle which is called the gracilis. Good. Okay, now all these abductors. Ooh, nice pectineus. So somebody did a good job. Whose mink is this again? Ours. Yeah, you guys got the pectineus very visible. If we clean it up and really push the abdom abdominal muscles back out of the way, you can see this muscle that goes right through the abdominal wall. You don't have to open it up, but you can see that it's it's coming through the abdominal wall, and it actually comes in and attaches to the femur, and it's that muscle that you can use to help you do sit-ups without using the rectus abdominis here. Um, and that's why they have you bend your legs when you do sit-ups, so you can't use that one. If your leg is straight, you can actually use this one to help you do sit-ups. So in physical fitness, they make you bend your legs. So that is called the pectineus. It is not on any of your diagrams, but it's part of that, that grouping. So what you guys want to do is just kind of learn the muscles down this way. If you just learn them in order, it's a lot easier, and you learn them the same way on the other side, just kind of learn them in a pattern. So that's the pectineus. And then I might need that diagram because it's been a while since I've looked in here and I do forget some things. Quite a lot of things actually. Who's got a, who's got a diagram for me? Is it, the, um, is it the abductor magnus brevis first or is it the abductor longus that comes first on the diagram? So if you start from up here, there's the vastus medialis. The very first one is the abductor longus. So these guys haven't really separated those out, so you kind of want to clean them up. That looks like the adductor longus, all of that, from the pectineus over. So there's the pectineus to the adductor longus to the adductor magnus et brevis. And then there's a mess. The semimembranosus just kind of comes apart. You can make it into a million muscles if you wanted to. So just find your separations and then keep them there. And then this would all be semimembranosus. So adductors do what, what function do they do? What does adduction mean? What does that 